Hi. Happily. We've got to 190, some dictionary facilities. These are ways that Python itself uses the dictionary to make your work e easier. Let's take a look. If you put double asterisk in your function definition, then this function can be called with any number of keyworded arguments. They will be gathered together as a dictionary so that inside this function, argdict will look like this dictionary. Notice that the identifiers you used will become strings, which are the keys. And then the value is a value. Very useful to make your function definitions even more flexible. If you put double asterisk in a call, it means the inverse thing. For example, if you have a dictionary, here we have some grapes and raisins, and we call our function with double asterisk in front of that sum dictionary, then what goes into your call is grapes equals 22 and raisins equals 31, just the keys and the values that were in the dictionary. Well, for this function, which only has the double asterisk argument, these then will be gathered up again into the argdict, which will look just like the subdict. Let's take a new look at do breakfast. Well, first here's the old do breakfast. Remember it? It was a long time ago now, huh? So here's our do breakfast, and we have some defaulted foods, and we print out a report, what the waitress might say to you. And we found we could call it various ways with positional arguments, no arguments at all, keyworded arguments, shuffled around, all good. But now we can do this. We can have a do breakfast with double star substitutions. Then let's look at our first call. Well, first we call it with nothing. Therefore, this has nothing in it. It's the empty dictionary. It doesn't break anything. When I do an update with an empty dictionary on an original dictionary, nothing changes. Behaves perfectly. And then we can print out the result. Let's look at printing out the result after we look at some more calls. Here we're going to do the call again. But this time we're going to say meat equals sausage and toast equals wheat, and beverage equals chai, these then are going to get gathered up into a dictionary, and then the meat will become sausage when we do the update. And the toast, wheat, and the beverage, chai. Okay, so that's very cool. We printed what the waitress had to say with a formatted string where we had to put order of meat in our curly braces, etc. Well, that's kind of a lot of typing of order. This might be a time when you want to use format. Now, we're not learning format much in this class because almost always you want the F string, but you may be no format. If you know format, then you know that you could give keyworded arguments here, and those keywords then can be in your curly braces. So I'm saying, can I bring you more beverage? The beverage then will be the beverage that came in the call, got wrapped up into the substitutions and substituted into the order. And there it is. If you are familiar with the percent style of string formatting, you might like doing percent %s, where here I put a key into a, a dictionary, and here is the dictionary. So this is the only time when the f string might not be the best, because it forced me to type order over and over again. I don't know if it's worth learning the other facilities for that. I do want to tell you that there is a danger in this. You can produce a very difficult bug. And in fact, I'll do it here. I'm going to make this call. I'm going to do do breakfast. 
and I'll say meat equals ham, and my toast will be tortilla, and my beverage, we're going to have milk. And when the waitress brings me my food, I find that my beverage is still coffee. I did not get my milk as I asked. Do you see the bug that I made in the call? If you misspell in your call one of your keywords, then that will go very nicely into substitutions without a bug. It will go into your order with the update without a bug. The bug won't be apparent until milk comes out. And that's a long time later and a difficult bug to find. And that is a good reason for a compiler because it checks your spelling. Let's study the locals.py. There's quite a few things in this. We're going to call report animals. And this now has two arguments. Those are the first two arguments. Those are the required arguments. And then we're going to give two more animals as keyworded arguments, dog and horse, which then get gathered up into the dictionary more. Also, we're going to have cat and fish. And those are local to report animals. There is a call, locals, that gives you a dictionary of the locals. So at this point, we'll look at our locals through our print dict. Let's look at print dict. I give it a message where we said locals. And then the dict comes in. I go through each of the keys in the sorted version of the dict. And if the value for the key is the type dict, then we have a dict as one of our locals, and we can report it. I reported it again using print dict. The rest of them just get printed out in the normal way of saying key, where I push it to the right in a field of 20, put a colon, and then I give the value. That's a nice way to print a dict. All right, so let's look at what our locals are. After we have these two locals, we have these that are also locals, and then whatever came in with the more. So our locals have the bird, the cat, the fish, the insect, and then we have the internal dictionary in locals, which is the dog and the horse. Let's do an update. Now, more is a dictionary that has in it what was on the call, which was a uh, dog and a horse. And so I'm going to update my local dictionary with that and then look at it. We see that we got a dog and a horse in there and still there is that internal dictionary with the dog and the horse. That was just to show you that you have that locals call and it has the more in it which has in it some more items that you might have to get to. Okay, now we want to use those locals for some formatting tricks. If you like that dot .format, the locals is a dictionary, so I can do double asterisk on the locals, and then I have all the local identifiers as keys in a dictionary, and so they come right in here. That might be handy to you. Another one is with a percent %s. Again, I can just say locals here, and then I put the keys like that before my percent with the parens S. So those are some tricks you can do if you want to go towards format and the percent replacement. All right, you're on to try some exercises. I hope that you find it a lot of fun. I'll see you next time.